Okay, on this video, I wanna show you step-by-step -step how to wholesale a house virtually after you get the contract. So I'm assuming that you found a good lead, you talked to a seller or an agent, you ran your numbers, you made an offer. And when I wholesale virtually, I like to have some contingency. I like to have an inspection contingency to give me a little window of time to do some due diligence. And what am I doing in, in due diligence? I'm verifying and validating that I actually have a deal. Now, when I wholesale virtually, just like anybody, if it's a market that you're specifically targeting and you've taken the time to really learn that market, I'm assuming then you're a market expert, you know what's going on, you know values, you know all the things that are pros and cons, you know what makes a good deal, a bad deal. But what happens when you're virtually wholesaling and it's a market that you're not really familiar with? What if it's a market you're still learning? What if it's a market where you're uncertain? What if it's in a part of town, maybe in a market that you're working where you just don't feel total confidence? What if you just aren't sure about the value, about your rehab number, about your offer, your contract price? Well, let me show you step-by-step -step how I do this. And I'm going to walk you through a live example. I'm going to walk you through a deal right now that one of my students submitted to me. We have the contract. We're in due diligence. We've got 10 days of due diligence. And so now I'm taking a hard look at this deal to determine is, okay, is this price we have it for? Is this a good price? Is this a price where if I buy this property, I can make money? Is this a price where I can wholesale the deal and make an assignment fee? Those are the questions that I have in a market where I have I have I don't know the market. Now, this is in Pittsburgh, and I have done a handful of flips in Pittsburgh, but Pittsburgh is a big market. Pittsburgh changes street by street. And so there's some fundamentals that are kind of consistent about Pittsburgh. But or a market like Pittsburgh, just like Philadelphia, just like St. Louis, maybe some areas, Chicago, anywhere where you have uh, row houses or, you know, you're in city type of environment, the values are going to change very drastically, very quickly in a lot of those markets. Now, a couple things before I show you, you know, how I do this. First of all, let me tell you a little bit about the property. It's a three bedroom, two bath. It's on a basement. It's a three story and it has a garage. Um, now, the garage is a big deal. I know that about Pittsburgh. Since it's so condensed, parking is always an issue. Is there off-street parking? Is there on-street parking? That's always an issue. So when you have that, it's a big bonus. So ours has that. So right away, I'm like, wow, we have something really cool here. And we're a three-bedroom, two-bath. We're not a three-one or a two-two. A lot of Pittsburgh has two bedrooms, not three bedrooms. And a lot of Pittsburgh has either only two bedroom and one bath, or it's got two bedrooms, two baths. So we've got some really great things, maybe some things that aren't so great, like no, no yard. We've got the contract for 80,000, but it's important to understand this was on market listed with an agent. It was at 130. They did a price drop to 115. And then immediately my student submitted an offer and got the contract at hundred. I helped them renegotiate it to 80. So we have the contract right now for 80,000 on a 115 list. Now that's a big deal because there's enough spread there to where if I want to try to wholesale this property for 10 or 15, I'm enough off of list price to still be appealing. Oftentimes what happens is if uh, let's say that they drop the price to 100 and I get the contract for 100, it could still be a deal. But because I'm now putting it out to the market at 110 and it's listed at 100, it's going to create some issue because people are going to feel like they're not getting a deal, even though the numbers might say it's a deal. A lot of people have a hard time looking past list price and just focus on their formula. Is it a deal? So we have that going for us. So that's great. So that's one concern that we have when we wholesale on market is, is there enough spread between list price and contract price? And we have that. So what I want to do now is I want to do a couple of things. Knowing that this is very neighborhood specific, knowing that in Pittsburgh and my deal, I really can't go very far away. I've got to look at my street. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go on, on the street view and I'm going to look at the street view and I'm going to try to see what's going on. Now, the street view may not be totally updated. Um, they are updating those more often, but there could be something that just happened, like a rehab that just happened. That's not going to show in that. So I'm also going to look at sold homes that have happened. So I'm going to look at that too, but I want to get a good sense of my street. I want to learn from the street view and try to get my head around what's going on on my street. So let me show you how I'm going to do this. And what my goal is, is my goal is to try to identify, are there other people flipping on my street? What can I learn from them? What can I find out about what they're doing? 
And how can I gather information from what they're doing and do two things? How can I find market research? So maybe I can find out what they've done, talk to an agent, get my head around kind of the market there, that street. And I'm also going to see if I can find a buyer. Maybe I can find a buyer to wholesale this property to. So those are my two objectives, market research, really learn my deal better, really understand what's going on and maybe find a buyer. So let's see if we can accomplish those two things. I'm going to even try to get on the phone and talk to somebody local there and see what ideas I can gather from them or buyers I can gather from them. So all that we're going to do right now. Hey, just a quick thanks to one of our sponsors and we'll get right back to the video. This video is brought to you by PropWire. Now I get asked all the time how to find motivated seller leads and PropWire is simply the best software for finding leads and downloading lists. And the best part is it's 100% free and there are no limit to how many leads you can download. PropWire has vacant houses, pre-foreclosures, absentee owners, REOs, auctions, high equity properties, probate, tired landlords, and more plus custom filters and stack lists so that you can laser target the most motivated sellers in your area. Plus they have cash buyers and private lenders nationwide so you can quickly wholesale houses and fund your rehab projects. Oh, and one more thing, this is not some seven day free trial that requires a credit card. Anyone can create a free account with just their email address and start building lists and downloading leads for free right away. Check it out at joinpropwire.com. Okay, so looking at the Google Street image, here's our house right here on the corner. And you can see here that it's got this garage, which is kind of a big deal, like I said. And I really wanna get my head around what's going on on this street. So like I said, I'm on the corner right here. You can see the street comes down like this. Over here, I think is some kind of park or, or green area, which is kind of cool. First, let's go down this road and see kind of what's down here. There's another house that kind of butts up to our house. Check this out, at the end of this little street here, there's a little sidewalk that goes that way. Right here, there's a little sidewalk that goes down. So this is really close to our property. Again, if you look, we're, we're right on the corner down here of the road that goes this way. So there's another road here, but I really like that we're in this area here. So like coming back to our street, again, there's our house. Now when I come back around to our street, there's something here that I notice. Check this out see the city back there so there's a city view possibly behind these houses that's something that i want to kind of pay attention to and look at um, views are something i pay really close attention to i'm a bit of a view snob um, views make a huge difference in when you understand them and buyers definitely understand views so th these houses on this side might have these city views we'll pay attention to that but check it out if i go down the street look at this house right here look at this house let me get a little closer like check this house out, 1145, this looks remodeled. And look at the look at the view back there, see the city? And there's some water right here. Let's see if I can get any closer. There's some water and some city. Look at this one's kind of nice. So that one's been updated. Here's one that's been updated, 1144. And look, there again, there I am right there. So I like that there's remodeling going on on my street. Now I can start to understand what's going on. I can start to try to find out what did these houses do? Like, look at this one. This one's been updated, this one's been updated. So I can kind of look here, this is 1130. You know, whatever addresses these are, I can kind of I can kind of look. This is 1132, that's 1130. So I can look these up and see. So for example, let's take a look at this one. So this is 1127, you can see here, this one's been updated. So now let's go take a look and see if there's something online we can find about 1127. So check it out, if I Google 1127, check it out. It's sold for 380 on 4121. Now that's old comp, it's not relevant because that was a while ago, but still 380. It's giving it a Zestimate right now of 389. So, you know, Zillow's saying that it's holding that value and Zillow's Zillow's estimated value is is you know, really accurate. Like they're within 5% or less than that, 2%, 3%. So this estimate of 389 is probably pretty accurate. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna take a quick look here. I'm not gonna open all these up, but you can see here, this is fully renovated. This is a nice renovation and check it out. Look at this view out this kitchen window. You're looking at the city. That's pretty cool. Now, one thing I like to do when I'm researching is I would like to look at the description on a fix and flip. Here's why. 
the agent only has a small you know, window of real estate to put in the description. So the, the agent is gonna highlight the best features and look at what they said. The very first line says, views galore of the city of Pittsburgh. That's telling me views are a big deal. It's the first thing this agent said about this property. Wake up to our city from your bed, means there's views from the master. Step into the upscale, brand new three bedroom, two and a half bath home off a quiet street. Three story contemporary structure ready to move in. 10 foot ceilings, that's a big deal. Everything new, blah, blah, blah. So I'm actually gonna call this agent. I think this would be a great one to call. It's just down the street. Let's take a look at the history real quick. Okay, they started at 425, dropped it to 399, took a minute, got an offer, sold it for 380, and that was a pretty good time of the market. Okay, so that's this property here. Let's go ahead and go back to our street view. Okay, so that's this house right here. But you could see here, I could continue to do this. Like I could do that on this house right here that, that we looked at. This is 1132. Now this is on the other side, same side as me. So like we could check this out and see what's going on here. I could look at this one. So again, these may not be relevant comps in that they just sold, but I really wanna learn what is going on on my street. Okay, so again, the listing agent was Elizabeth Kaufmeal. I want to call her right now. And before I call her, I'm going to send the text. And I'm basically going to say, you know, hi, Elizabeth. This is Jerry. I'm an investor. I have a distressed house for sale on Gottman Street. I'm looking to sell for all cash. It's just down the street from a house that you listed and sold for an investor flipper. And I'm wondering if your investor might be interested in my property. I'm selling it at a discount. Something to the effect of that. Please call me. And what I'm looking for is is that agent to engage with me, to respond back, to say, say to me something like, you know, tell me about it, or yeah, let's get on a call, then get on the phone and talk to her. I wanna do market research. I also wanna see if she has an interested buyer, maybe this buyer that she flipped this house with, or maybe she knows another buyer. All right, let's jump over and do the call. Morning. Hi, Elizabeth. Hey, how's it going? Good, you probably know the property. It's on the corner at the end. Yeah, on the end there by the park. Yep, yeah, that's it. It's tough to sell, huh? Yeah, I mean, I got it pretty low, and I'm a flipper, and I do rehabs. I'm not local, but I've done, I don't know, six, six, eight rehabs in Pittsburgh, you know, over the years. So I know it's a full, like, it's a big-time rehab, needs everything top to bottom. <laughs> right. Yeah, I know. I've, I've seen it on the market for a while. What are you looking to get for it off the market? Yeah, great question. So I've... I've just got a lot going on. So I'm like, you know what? I think I got this for a great deal. Maybe I could just find a local flipper that wants it and just do a quick assignment, you know, to somebody. And then I saw you flip that one. Um, I know your face in the city, which makes a big difference. And I know you sold it at the peak. We're not in those days anymore. <laughs> I think it's still the highest sold listing there in that little pocket up there. I mean, it was a beautiful remodel. Definitely a beautiful remodel. Thank you. Yeah. But that guy, Philip, he's a client of mine from New York. And he buys and flips stuff. So I'll run it past him. I'll just be totally open with you. They did a price drop to 115. We came in and got it at 80. Okay. So, you know, I'd let it go for 90. Okay. Which I think is a deal. I mean, it, I think even on that side, even in a little slower market, I with the garage, 3.2, I think it's a 300 back end. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think it could go for at least that. So let me let me run it by Philip. He likes that area. Also run it by another guy, Ryan, that does a lot of renovations too in the local area. He's from Shaler. Uh huh. And um, so if he would want that, I know he got the, the the one that you calling me about, like the one that my client did. He got that for like I want to say we got one twelve. It was like kept dropping and dropping, and, and then went to one fifteen, and then he went in at one twelve and got it. And I thought that was a good good price for that one since it had that view. What do those go for higher? Like, is there is there kind of like a rule for what those sell for on the other side with the view? Yeah, I think they just go for much more. But then again, um, even on that back street behind your house, there's this guy that does a lot of renovations in that neighborhood too. I can't remember his name, um, but he lists he always lists his places with Pyatt, and um, he he had one with like no backyard. It was yellow. I can't remember the exact address, but it's almost like five down from yours on the corner there on the back road. 
And he ended up getting like 300 for that one, which I was surprised. There's There's been some fix-ups on that, like just, so I'm on the corner. If you start heading, you know, back the other way, it looks like there's some sidewalks and stairs. Does that go down to like a park or where's that go back behind there? Yeah, it goes down to like a park and also connects you to like a sidewalk to get down to like different areas of Pittsburgh. Is a garage a big deal? Garages are always important, yeah. especially... I think for a lot of these tech people that are coming in, they want the garage with the electrical um, hookup for their car. Oh, because they have electric cars. Yeah. That's yeah. Thing we're seeing a lot of my flippers do is putting the electrical charging vehicle. I was kind of hoping like the garage would make up for the wrong side with without the view It'd be a big bonus. And the three, a lot of these are twos over there. A home office, an extra bedroom. Mm -hmm. For the right flipper, so 90 would be my number. If, if you want to push it to your clients at 95, I'd be happy to pay a 5K finder fee. Okay, great. Well, then um, I'll push it through to them and see if they have any interest and get back to you. Okay. When do you think you could get a hold of them and get back? I'm going to send this off to them here this morning. I would say, let's say tomorrow or so. Okay. And just, you know, they're going to see it on market, which tends to turn off some buyers. Just keep in mind, it was at 130. They just did a 115 at 90, 95. I think, I think a, a cash buyer flipper in the neighborhood could still feel like they're getting a deal. Yeah, definitely. Because it's always hard to do on market when they see what it's listed at. Okay, so you just don't want to get into this, this place. I'm just, I mean, I will. I, I feel like I'm, I will. I'm just kind of like, you know what, if I can find a buyer and just move it along, I'll be I'll be fine with that. If not, then I'll buy it, rehab it, and flip it. I feel good about my number, but I just, it's a big project too. And I'm just not overly excited about another giant rehab in Pittsburgh. <laughs> yeah. What do you think a full, a full blown? I mean, it's 17, 24 square feet, needs everything top to bottom. What would you budget? It's not for a long time. I would say at least 175. 175 in rehab? Yeah. Oh, that much. Yeah, if you're if you're hiring, are you going to do all the work yourself? Or are you hiring? That? No, no, I hired all out. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the electrical in this house alone could be like forty, just to run all new electric. Well, how's that a deal? Someone pays one pays ninety to buy it and pays one seventy five in rehab. Well, I mean, if you could sell it at the three hundred mark, I think you'll make out. You're going to get for what eighty? I have the contract for eighty, but if I if I let it go for ninety ninety five, I mean, really think they'll spend one seventy five out? numbers on this one i just assumed everything but i would i normally spend on 1700 square feet top to bottom around 100 maybe 110 115 okay i don't know i might be off on that I'd probably throw some windows at the side above the garage there or... yeah yeah kind of pretty that way you know like it's not you're not staring at another building you're nice like park there like you have to do those things to get that price you know i mean if someone's spending 175 and they're buying it for 90 i would think they want to be closer to four on a on a price Definitely. That's why sometimes these, these renovations are costly, you know, I think you can keep it at 150 the yeah. renovation budget. Yeah. So let's say you got, you know, if someone could come in and feel good about like three, 350, 375, I mean, it could support it if it was done right, but it's going to, it would have to be, you're right. You'd have to spend the, the whole 150 on this thing. Yeah, and then you list it at 340 or maybe even list it slightly under and get multiple offers. Buyers in Pittsburgh, you don't want to buy anything that's not fully been in the market right now. Yep, we're back to traditional real estate where you got to do a full reno. Yeah, and if you do cheapo, they're like, no way, they're not going to pay for it anymore. Yep. They really want everything done. That's right. There's there's really a buyer still today, but they're, they got options, so they want it done right. Yeah, so it's tougher when you're renovating. I mean, I still think Pittsburgh is one of the better places to buy and you're getting this large renovation. You're still making a lot of money on the renovation flips. I mean, if you go to you know any other city, I think it's like 30 to 40. If you if you net that, you're doing pretty good. Here, I think if you get anything over 60, you're doing awesome. Feel free to call me. Yeah, I will. Okay, great. Thank you, Elizabeth. Appreciate you. Talk to you soon. Bye. Okay, so that was extremely productive. I hope you learned so much from that call. Talking to a, a market expert, an agent representing a flipper in the same market. She mentioned she had other buyers. I was able to have a very high-level conversation with her, mostly because I know what questions to ask. Hope you caught that. We talked about the view. We talked about the garage. We talked about the what kind of rehab you have to do. We talked about the park next to us. She, she mentioned you know putting some windows in to bring in more light and kind of showcase that that pretty park over there and trees. You know, those things all matter. She talked about the ideal buyer is going to want have an electric car if it's, you know, somebody coming 
to Pittsburgh for tech. So all of this information, I did not know before that call. And now I have a much broader sense of what's going on and a much more detailed sense of what's going on. You know, I was kind of looking at the rehab around a hundred grand. She's saying, no, you got to go top to bottom. I get that. What she said there is very true. We're in a slower market. Does that mean there's no buyers? No, it means the buyers are pickier. They're choosier. They have more options, which means there's no cutting corners. If you're going to rehab, you're going all in. Like you're making this thing, you either go for it or don't go for it. It's not the days during COVID where we could just kind of put anything out there and there's a buyer for it. No, if you're going to put it out there, you better go for the home run. You better go for top market price. You better do that rehab all the way, top to bottom, make it pop, make it the best house that, that a buyer just cannot say no to. That's how you have to rehab today. So active buyers in the market, they also know that. So let's see what happens. I mean, maybe we'll do a follow-up video. Let me know if you want me to do a follow-up video and see what she generates as far as interest in this property. She's definitely thinking that if this was done right, it could call for a higher value. Originally, I was thinking, you know, 300, maybe spend 100. That might still work. You know, spend 100, sell it for 300, I buy it for 80. That Those numbers sort of work. Like, that's a deal. I think what she's saying is spend 150 and try to get 350, 375, and the market could support it because it has the infrastructure, meaning it has the garage, three bedrooms, a park, some of those things. Not the view, though. Uh, the view would push us into the fours. Easy. So you could see, though, like, let's say I looked at a comp and I did not do this research. And I said, man, it's across the street and it sold for 489 or 450 or 400. I could really throw off my numbers because I'm on the wrong side of the street, but I didn't know that. And now I comp it with something across the street that's that's a different comp. See how I can get myself into trouble. So it's so important that when you wholesale virtually that you take the time to learn your market. Hope you found a ton of value in this video. Guys, if you did, leave a comment, say, Jerry, you are a flipping genius. And I'll see you on the next video.